welcome dear students welcome to this video today we are going to start chapter 17 of your maths book the title of the chapter is formulae today in this chapter we will be learning about how a given condition is represented by using certain alphabets known as variables now here we will be knowing about what is a formula so if we define a formula a formula is an equation means a it's the equation which is represented using certain alphabets and that formula it shows the relationship between two or more than two quantities then in solving these questions we will be using certain words like variables and uh, literals so what are these we will be knowing about them but for this moment you just remember this one in the beginning of the video Variable means those alphabets which we will be using like A, B, C, D, any values, they are known as the variables. And literals will be those numerical values, 1, 2, 3, 4, they will be known as the numericals. So, with this, we are going to start the first question of our exercise, that is question number 1 of exercise 17. So, question number 1, question number 1 of exercise 17. It says that the area of a rectangular field is twice the product of P and Q. Then we have to rewrite the statement in the form of a formula. Then what is said that the area, we have to represent the area in terms of P and Q. So what we are given is, we have been given the symbol for area. We have been given the symbol for area. It is uh, K. So here... If we are able to write the answer, we can write in one line simply. What is given? That area is equal to twice the product of P and Q. Then what will be the product of P and Q? This will be P into Q. And since it was given that the area is equal to twice the sum of P and Q, so we need to multiply 2 here. Twice the product of P and Q. So P into Q is the product and that one is twice. So, the final answer for this one will be K is equal to twice P Q. This will be the answer for the first question. After that, the next one, question number 2. Question number 2, it says that Maya walks for A hours at X kilometer per hour and then for B hours at Y kilometer per hour. Write a formula. For the average speed of the journey. Now we have to calculate the average speed for Maya. That what is her speed when she is walking uh, for A hours at uh, X kilometer per hour. And uh, she is walking for B hours at uh, Y kilometer per hour. Then in that case what is the speed of Maya. We have to find out that one. So here what is the speed of Maya given in the question? The speed of Maya, here let's solve this one. The speed of Maya. Speed of Maya. It is given x kilometer per hour. x kilometer per hour. Then she walks for A hours. So distance covered by Maya will be equal to a x kilometer. It will be a x kilometer because the speed is x kilometer per hour and she is covering a distance of covering a distance in a hours then the distance total which she walks that will be a x kilometer similarly the speed of uh, and uh, another speed is given also speed is given b kilometer per hour so here sorry not b this is y Another speed is y kilometer per hour and she walks for she walks for b hours. 
so here distance covered will be distance covered will be equal to by kilometers now what do we know we know that uh, speed is equal to distance by time so speed is equal to distance by time so what is the total distance covered by mira maya c is covering a distance of ax kilometer so here the distance is first ax kilometer plus another distance is by kilometer and what is the total time that she is requiring c is working for a hours here c is working for a hours and c is working for b hours so the total time will be a plus b so this will be equal to a plus b and this will be the average speed of maya let's see another question in the another question it is say that apple cost rupees x per dozen and banana cost rupees y per dozen then find the total cost of 18 apples and 30 bananas then here in this question we have been given the cost of apples and bananas so let's see question number 3 here it is given what is given the cost of given apple cost rupees x per dozen and bananas cost rupees y per dozen so let's write this solution cost of 1 dozen 1 dozen the first one is given apple apple now 1 dozen apple means 12 apples 12 it is given rupees x then if the cost of 12 apple is rupees x then the cost of one apple will be x by 12 this will be rupees x by 12 rupees x by 12 similarly cost of one dozen banana cost of 1 dozen banana this will be also 12 this is also given rupees this is also given rupees x so here also the cost of 1 banana cost of 1 banana this will be equal to rupees so this was given y y by 12 This will be y by twelve. Now, what is say that find the total cost of eighteen apples and thirty bananas. So, if one apple is cost rupees x by twelve, then therefore, we to say that total cost C of eighteen apples and thirty bananas. It will be eighteen into x by twelve plus thirty bananas. Thirty into y by twelve. And let's solve this. Six three is eighteen. Six two is twelve. Six five is thirty. Six two is twelve. Try six by two plus five y by two. Solving this one, LCM will be two. This will be try six plus five. So this will be your. Final answer. This is the formula. The cost will be equal to three x plus five y by two. Question number five. Let's see the next number five. What does it say? It says that the area of a circular ring is pi times the difference between the squares of the outer radius and the outer radius. So here the It is very simple here. We can just uh, write in a single line. But it's given the area of a circular ring is pi times. Then here the area is given a. Area is given that the difference between the capital R square and small r square, it is pi times. So this will be the answer for this one. 
the area of a circular ring is pi times the difference between the square of the outer radius and the inner radius. So, this is the outer radius r, it's a square and small r square, the difference that is pi times the area. So, this will be the formula for this one. Now, let us see question number 7. Question number 7, it is given that, question number 7, it is given, given that S is equal to, let us see question number 7. Question number 7, it is given. We are given S is equal to N by 2 into twice A plus N minus 1 and D. Now here what is said in the first question, the first question is said that rewrite the formula with D as a subject. Now, D as a subject means this D we have to separate from all other variables. So, now we are to solve this one as an equation. So, here S is equal to N by 2. First of all, we need to do the bracket part. So, twice A plus N into D, N D minus into plus minus D once are D. Then next, we have to multiply this one. All the terms we need to multiply now. So this will be S is equal to N A because when this 2 will be multiplied, if I am multiplying this 2, this 2 and this 2 will cancel out. So this will be only N A. Then again plus because plus into plus is plus. N into N, this will be N square D by 2 because here this 2 will be there. Then again minus N D by 2 and d by 2 then now we have to find out the value of d only so here this will be s is equal to find out the lcm this will be 2 this will come out 2 n e plus n square d minus n d next step do the cross multiplication 2 into s this will be 2s equal to 2na plus n square d minus nd. Now just separate all the d terms. Let be this one on the right side. Take this one to the left hand side. So when the side will change this will become negative. 2na equal to n square d minus nd. Then now from this we can take d as a common one. From this we can take d common. This will be twice s minus 2na is equal to d n square minus n. Then from here we have to find out the value of d. d will be equal to 2s minus 2na by n square minus n. This will be the value for d, means finding the value of d. Now next part of the question says that find d when n is equal to 20, a is equal to 3 and s is equal to 630. And here question number b. Question number b we have been given that n is equal to 20 a is equal to 3 and x is equal to 6 and s is equal to s is equal to 630. Now in this equation in place of n we have to write 20 for a we have to write 3 and for s we have to write 630. Let us see therefore d will be equal to in place of s we have to write 630 2 into 630 then minus 2 into in place of n we have to write 20 in place of a we have to write 3 by n square n square is 
20 square minus 20. This one. So now we have to solve this one. Now after solving this one, the final value that uh, we will be getting in this case means uh, after following all that uh, this um, multiplication and again this multiplying this all the final value that we will get that will be equal to 3 this one we will be getting as equal to 3 so you need to solve this one and find out the value by yourself that how this 3 comes here in case of now let us see question number 9 now for question number 9 now for question number 9 question number 9 we have been given question number 9 we have been given that uh, f minus 32 f minus 32 by 180 is equal to c by 100 c by 100 and now we have to find out make f the subject of the formula means here we have to find out the value of f means this f we have to separate from all other values so first step let us do the cross multiplication cross multiplication mm -hmm. means this numerator we have to multiply with this denominator this numerator we need to multiply with this denominator so let us do 100 into f it will be 100 f minus 100 into 32 32 100 minus this will be equal to 180 c then again here this f we need to separate so this f will be on the left side 100 f is equal to 180 c when this will change the side it will become plus 3 2 double 0 we need to find out the value of f so f will be equal to 180 c plus 3 2 double 0 by 100 so from these above values we can take the common thing so in the above value what is the common we need to determine that one between 180 and 3200 what is the hcf of these two we have to find out that one now so here we have common 20 is common in this one 20 is the common in this so 20 if you are taking 20 common this will be 29 ja 189c plus this will be 21 ja 20 26 this will be 160 divided by 100 so this will be reduced 25 sir 100 so the value you will get 96 plus 160 divided by 5 now question number b b what is say that what is the value of f when c is equal to 35 question number b b we have been given c is equal to 35 now in this we have to put the value of c as 35 so f will be equal to 9 into 35 plus 160 by 5 so solve this one plus 160 9 5 here, 45 4 in hand 27 plus 4 31 how much this one will be equal to 5 plus 0 5 6 plus 1 7 3 plus 1 4 by 5 so this one the final value after dividing 5 95 so this one will be equal to 95 after this next uh, now let us see the question question number 13 now question number 30 13 what is said question number 13 we have been given a is equal to root over x plus c by x minus c then in this type of question whenever we have a square root we need to square both the sides square means one power is to be given that is two both sides so this square it will be given this side also x minus c and here this will be a square now this will be a square then in this type this is square and this is square root they cancel out each other 
this will be a square is equal to x plus c pi x minus c. Now we need to do the cross multiplication. This will be multiplied with the denominator here that is 1 and this will be multiplied with this. This will become a square x minus a square c. Now all the x containing term we have to bring towards the left hand side minus a square x minus a square c this will go that side this will be minus c now here what is common let us take what is common here x is common it will be 1 minus a square and here what is common in this two c is common then this will be minus a square minus 1 so what will be the value of x x will be equal to c minus a square minus 1 by 1 minus a square this one then now in the next part what we have to do is you can leave the answer up to here also or if you have done your in your algebra part if you remember the formula uh, from the formula you can solve it more uh, by rearranging this one so it's okay if you don't rearrange it then also this is okay you can leave it up to here also let it be up to here it will be your final answer that is c times minus a square minus 1 by 1 minus a square now the last question of this exercise that uh, if a is equal to d plus c by b minus c express c in terms of a minus b let us see question number 14 what is question number 14 given let's see question number 14 it is given that uh, if a is equal to given what we are given a is equal to b plus c by d minus c now here we have to find out the value of c so the same thing once again here no square root is given so we don't need to multiply or we don't need to do the square just we need to do is the cross multiplication let us do this one we need to multiply with the denominator one here this will be b plus c a b minus a c now we have to find out the value of c so all the c containing term we have to bring towards the left hand side C plus AC is equal to AB minus B. Then the common here is C 1 plus A and here common is B. It will be A minus 1. Now what will be the value of C? C will be equal to A minus 1 by 1 plus A. Now we have been given the value of A and B we are given. The value of A and B we are given here. This will be B. Now we are given the value of A and B for question number second part. Then that is given. Given B is equal to 3 1 by 2. Now 3 1 by 2 is equal to 7 by 2. And A is equal to 8 we are given. So these values we have to put it here. So they are 4. Therefore, C is equal to, in place of B, we have to write 7 by 2. In place of A, we have to write 8 minus 1 by, in place of A, we have to write 8. So, this will be equal to 7 by 2 into 7 by 9. That will be equal to 49 by 2 by 9. This will be equal to 49 by 2 into 9 that is equal to 49 by 18 and this will be your final answer for question number 17 that is 49 by 18 49 by 18 and in this case following the similar technique we have to solve all the remaining questions.